To the left hand side for Vieira, who will play through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal. Gabriel Jesus to finish it off. Oh, what a way to do it! Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal. He's back and he's back with a bang. Into the penalty area it goes. Gabriel Keller and it's into the back of the net. Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the daily Arsenal podcast with me, Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all good. Hope you're all well. Welcome back to another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast with me, your host, Harry Simi. I'm sorry about the lighting. I'm sorry about the picture if you're watching us on video. It's not the greatest setup in the world. I am here in my hotel room in Dusseldorf, um, where I am based at the moment for Euro 2024. But that means uh, you're going to have to bear with me on the quality sometimes with regards to the videos that we're putting out on the channel and for the podcast. Thank you ever so much for being with me as always. We've got a fair bit to get into today um, along Arsenal lines, which I'm really, really looking forward to because over the last few days, it feels like where I've been covering games out here, my focus has kind of shifted away from the Gunners a little bit and been more on the European Championships, what's happening here. Obviously, I'm watching it all the time through those kind of Arsenal tinted glasses. And we're going to talk about some of my observations on one particular Arsenal player yesterday who I watched in the flesh in William Saliba a little bit later on. But yeah, good to be back. Good to be talking Arsenal at length and in detail. And I can't wait to get into today's show with you guys. If I could quickly ask you, if you haven't done so already, please do leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel as well if your brand spanking new. As I say, jam-packed show today. We're going to bring you uh, some thoughts on uh, David Raya. We're going to talk uh, Amadou Onana after I watched him in the flesh yesterday. We're also going to talk William Saliba. Where does he sit among the world's best centre-backs at this moment in time? We're going to talk Jules Koundé and we're going to talk Ricardo Calafiori. Don't get my hopes up, people. Don't get my hopes up. We're going to do all of that on this edition of the Chronicles of Aguna. Stay tuned. Okay, then let's begin uh, with David Raya. It was reported yesterday by Fabrizio Romano that Arsenal have officially now activated their option to buy David Raya. Now, we've heard that this has been coming for a long time. Nobody will be surprised by this news. Nobody will be uh, caught off guard by it. Um, I think it's a transfer that we all knew was going to happen this summer. It's just a case of when rather than if. And I think we can all agree that after a shaky start to life at Arsenal, where people were asking questions of him, I do think in hindsight, a lot of the questions of David Raya were born out of frustration for the fact that a real fan favourite in Aaron Ramsdale had been pushed to one side by Mikel Arteta in order for David Raya to come in. But when you look at the impact, the positive impact that he had over the course of the season for Arsenal, it's really, really difficult now, isn't it, to argue that Mikel Arteta got that wrong. So um, I think it's a welcome signing. I think it's a good signing. I think he's a player we always knew was going to be Arsenal's number one goalkeeper going into the 24-25 season. So it's just a matter of time now as to when that deal is going to be completed and confirmed. David Raya will be an Arsenal player. And according to Fabrizio Romano, Arsenal have got the ball rolling there. So, yeah, um, I'm pleased about it. I, I, I'll be honest with you. When we first signed him, I wasn't completely convinced. Um, I, I've mentioned that there were questions being asked of him and, you know, he was making mistakes and there was a bit of nervousness there. And I think that nervousness probably subsided a little bit over the course of the season when he kind of got his feet under the table, started to feel a little bit more comfortable. The defence as a unit was really, really impressive, again, particularly during that second part of the campaign. Um, and look, it takes time, doesn't it, to build new relationships. It takes time to find your feet at a new football club. He, he went through that slightly transitional period and has now come out of it a much better goalkeeper and in a position where he can really, really help this Arsenal team moving forward. I'm pleased about it. Um, I still think the goalkeeping position is one that you're probably going to see a little bit more work done on over the course of the summer. And that could be 
with regards to, uh, you know, another incoming maybe. Uh, could Aaron Ramsdale be on his way out? We know that Carl Hine recently signed a new contract with the club, but that will be, I'm sure, as the third choice goalkeeper. So do Arsenal now allow Aaron Ramsdale to go? Um, will they allow that to happen once they seal the David Raya deal and maybe go out and look to bring in a number two? I don't know. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that. But what I would say is that I don't think that's our work done in the goalkeeping department once David Raya is signed. And that could be with regards to outcomings, uh, sorry, outgoings or incomings, as I say. Uh, but yeah, David Raya, uh, that deal is not far away from what I'm hearing. I had the pleasure of uh, attending the France versus Belgium match uh, at the Dusseldorf Arena, which is just down the road from where I'm staying uh, yesterday. It was the most eagerly anticipated of the round of 16 ties, but in terms of entertainment, it certainly didn't deliver. It was a bit of a bore fest. Um, the French still haven't really clicked at these European championships. The Belgians always bring so much promise because of the talent that they have within their group, but they rarely deliver uh, when it comes to getting over the line in these big games. Um, there was a couple of players on the pitch that I was keeping a really close eye on. One of them, obviously, was Amadou Onana, a player that we've been heavily linked with, a player that our latest scouting report video is based on. The link to that is in the description if you want to go back and check it out. I haven't been hugely impressed with Amadou Onana, to be honest with you. Um at these championships. I've heard people say that he's a really good midfielder and a colleague of mine in the, the press box yesterday said to me, would you take him at Arsenal? Because I think he'd be a great addition to Arsenal. And I said, you know what? I did a scouting report on him. I'm not totally convinced, not totally sure. What I saw yesterday didn't really change my mind on that. There were multiple occasions where Amadou Anana would receive the ball in that midfield and it just felt to me like at times he was playing too safe. Now, I do wonder if the fact that he had Kevin De Bruyne next to him, who's not really a defensive-minded player in any way, shape or form, if we're being honest, alongside him, made him a little bit more conservative in, in his own game. Was he fearful of what might happen if he lost the ball? I'm sure he couldn't rely on Kevin De Bruyne necessarily to be providing that defensive cover, not because he's not a top player, but just because it's not really in his nature. Um so I do wonder if that that plays a part because that midfield was imbalanced. And we've been talking a lot about Declan Rice playing in an unbalanced midfield and how that's made him look like a much worse player at these championships than we know him to be. So I want to give Amadou Anana the benefit of the doubt in that sense. But when he did get on the ball, I never felt that he was creative enough. I never felt that he progressed the ball early enough. And so it goes back to what we were saying on the scouting report, which you can check out, which is generally top line after going through the metrics, and, and we do that bit by bit through the episode, but it does feel like Amadou Anana doesn't really or isn't really the guy that will address some of the issues that I think we're looking to address this summer in that position. So his performance yesterday, it didn't really change my mind on him. He's been eliminated from the competition, as have Belgium. They were probably a little bit unfortunate to go out yesterday. I'm not saying that they were good or, or deserving of going through, but I don't think the French were either. And it was a deflected goal off of Yang Vertonghen. and oh no, uh, in the end that made uh, the difference and France uh, scraped through as a result of it. Another player who was on show yesterday is a player that we know all about, our very own William Saliba. Another solid, calm, assured and complete performance from a player that I would say right now, on current form, is the best central defender in world football. There will be people that disagree with that. There will be other names thrown into the mix, of course. And, you know, I, I, I put my hands up and say that William Saliba has plenty still to prove in this game that we love. There's no doubt about that. But on current form, I can't think of many better than William Saliba, if any at all. So by my estimations, now you might say this is a wild take. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. William Saliba on current form is the best central defender in world football. And if you disagree, please let me know who you think is currently or even over the last year performing at a higher level than him. He's been almost immaculate for Arsenal at centre-back. He's forged a hugely impressive partnership along with Gabriel. He's then come 
onto international duty. He's come into a tournament where he wasn't expected to start under Didier Deschamps, who obviously took a look at him in training, will have been well aware of his exploits at club level and took the decision to put him into the starting lineup. He's moved him to left centre-back, which isn't exactly where he plays for Arsenal. He's had to build a new partnership with Deo Upamakano alongside him. And he's done such a magnificent job that I think it's completely fair and completely justified to make a claim like the claim I've just made. William Saliba on current form is the best central defender in world football. Let me know your thoughts. Reports in Spain claim Arsenal are looking at another player that was in action uh, in Dusseldorf yesterday that I got to see up close. And that is, of course, Jules Koundé. Um, there's lots of talk suggesting that Arsenal are interested in him, that a £60 million fee would be enough uh, to land him should Arsenal want to proceed with that move. First of all, I'm not sure that Jules Koundé is the answer to what Arsenal are seeking in defence. I think if we're looking to address or improve one particular area in our defence, it would be at left back. And so Jules Koundé doesn't really appeal to me in terms of an option. He doesn't really scream out to me, I'm your solution, I'm your guy. Um, it's a lot of money to spend on a player that doesn't really address a desperate need, in my opinion. Am I convinced by him? Not really. I feel like he's one of these players that unfortunately has got caught in that kind of in-between space of being a, a fullback and centre-back, would have started his career at centre-back, was brought through the ranks playing that role and that position, made his name doing that, and over time has been moved on to the right-hand side. I look at an example that we have closer to home, Ben White, someone who, for me, um, obviously came in as a centre-back, but has managed to transition into a right-back and done a really, really good job that. And in a system like ours, where he's, uh, you know, playing a very specific role, it works. And, you know, I'm sure that we're going to see Jurian Timber probably used as a full-back over the new season. We've seen Tommy Asu, who joined Arsenal as a centre-back, make that move as well. But with Jules Koundé, I don't think that that fit at right-back looks as natural as it has maybe to somebody like Ben White. And I know that when you're talking about physically tall, powerful guys, your mind always goes to centre-half, right? That's what you see them as. That's what you view them as. That's what you think they are. Um, but yeah, uh, with with Jules Koundé, um, I'm not sure he's the answer. And I think if anything, Arsenal are going to be looking to bring someone in who can play on the left-hand side rather than on the right. So I don't really feel that there's too much in this and I'm not going to therefore uh, pay too much attention to these rumours or this particular story. But we are going to talk next up about a story that maybe has a little bit more credibility behind it, but one that certainly appeals to me more in terms of the player that we are being linked with. Don't get my hopes up. According to Gianluca Di Marzio, who, according to my Italian colleagues that I'm out here with, say is the, and I quote, most reliable source in Italian football, Arsenal are seriously interested in Calafiori, the uh, Bologna defender who had an incredible season last season uh, and, of course, uh, gave a great impression of himself here at the European Championships. Ricardo Calafiori is uh, just 22 years old, a young man who is on the rise. He looks the part um, when playing at centre-back. You know, he, 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 if I think growing up, brilliant Italian centre-half and close my eyes, I would see Riccardo Calafiori, a no-nonsense solid defender, but with a bit of flair and panache about what he does as well, with that confidence, with that brilliant ability, with the intelligence. He seems to have it all, and he's had a magnificent season. Uh, last season with Bologna, who of course qualified for the Champions League under Thiago Motta, which was an unbelievable achievement. Now we know that there are multiple clubs looking at him. Clubs in Italy, Inter have been linked, Juve have been linked, uh, Milan have been linked too. But we also know that there are clubs outside of Italy that are interested in this particular player, one of them being our very own Arsenal. Now, there is no reason why if Arsenal are seriously interested in Ricardo Calafiori, they cannot compete with the Serie A giants financially. So the only issue would be that if Calafiori wanted to stay in Italy. Now, it's not to be 
uh, you know, stereotypical or judgmental at this stage. But generally speaking, Italian-based players, born and bred, tend to like to stay in Italy. It's a competitive league. It's one of the best leagues in Europe. It's also a wonderful place to live um, and a great place to play your football. The footballing culture is steeped in incredible history. So you can understand why a lot of Italian players want to stay in Italy. Um, and I've said in the past that I'm not always sure how Serie A players sort of translate in terms of carrying their skill sets over when they move uh, to the Premier League. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't because stylistically the leagues are quite different. But if Calafiori is interested in moving to the Premier League, if he is interested in a move to Arsenal, there is no reason why Arsenal wouldn't be able to get this deal done. The money which Bologna would be asking, and I don't know an exact price, would certainly not be anything outside of Arsenal's capabilities. We know that Arsenal financially are in a much more secure and stronger position than Juve, Milan or Inter in terms of what they could offer. Um, and we'd certainly be able to offer way more in terms of salary and package as well. So, yeah, um, you know, there's no reason why we wouldn't uh, be able to do that. Um, I mean... The only other thing, um, the only other thing would be, you know, it is this one of those plays good at a tournament, everybody gets excited, um, and maybe his level is exaggerated. And actually, when you watch him week in, week out, you will see that perhaps he's not quite the player that some people have made him out to be. I think that can happen at tournaments. It happens a lot. However, with... Ricardo Calafiori, I can say, and, you know, based on what I've seen, but also based on what people tell me that watch Italian football a lot closer than I do, that this is not a flash in the pan. This is a guy that's been really, really impressive for a season now. Um, some would argue that a season's not long enough to say that he's a top centre-half and that you should be going and spending a big amount of money on. But there's a lot of excitement in Italy around Calafiori and where he could go. So this isn't just turns up at tournament, puts in a couple of good performances, all of a sudden everyone wants him flavour of the month. It isn't the James Rodriguez thing, if 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 that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I'm I I'd I'd love to get this guy in. I'd be so excited if we could do this deal. And if we hear of greater progress, then we'll do a scouting report. We'll do a, a, a much greater uh, analysis on the player. Um, I've got a few down days over the next days where I'm not at games, so I'll have more time during the day outside of my kind of work commitments to put together some of these scouting reports. And I'd love to bring them to you. And Ricardo Calafiori could well be the subject of one of those very, very soon. If you've got any questions, if you've got any thoughts, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll pick those up on tomorrow's show. It's going to be difficult for me to do live streams while I'm here because just judging by the internet connection, it's not that great. I'll try and do one or two if I can get a stronger connection somewhere. Uh, but when I'm in the hotel, I'm going to record them just because it's safer. Um, but what that will mean is rather than you guys getting involved in the live chat and me having that to kind of respond to and go off, I'm going to pick up questions from the previous day's show and carry them into the next one. So if you've got any thoughts on Calafiori, on Kunde, on anything that we've discussed, on William Saliba, Leave those in the comments below and I'll pick those up for tomorrow's episode. Like, subscribe, you know the drill by now, and I'll see you all on the next one. Until then, up the Arsenal. Have a great Tuesday. Goodbye.